So good evening, everybody, and a very warm welcome to module three. Oh, I'll step up to success. Lorraine, are you okay with the waiting room there? We've just yeah. got um, Julie coming in. So just let Julie join us and I will say hello and welcome again, just as she's connecting. Julie's having a tea as well. I see that's all right. <laughs> she's not. Oh, Ash is here now as well, Lorraine. Thank you. Oh, and Linda. Linda. <laughs> I'll do a rewind. If you're watching this on recording, I do apologise. We're going to start again in a second. I'm just going to let these last couple get in and get connected and then we'll get cracking. Hi, Ash. Hi, Linda. Hiya. Very warm welcome. So you're all well. Hi, Vanessa. Ash, I'm just going to... I'm, I'm starting on the um... Hi. Oh, who was that saying hello then? <laughs> Oh, we've got a cat here. We've got a black cat. That's lucky. We've got a black cat on, on screen. So that's lucky. That's good. So uh, good evening. Evan. I just, just started, but I'll start again because I've had a couple of people just popping in now, which is fine. We're only a couple of minutes past half or seven. So we're all, all keen and ready to go. So very good evening. Welcome to module three of Step Up to Success. And you'll have seen from the workbook, we're talking a little bit about um, who's your ideal client this evening and a bit about what's your mission um, and so we're just going to have a bit of a recap, first of all. So obviously in week one, we talked a lot about mindset and about affirmations and about some daily goals and things like that. And um, just really want to take you back there for a minute, because we, the, the gratitude and the goal setting really needs to be linked and done. Kate's in the waiting room now, Lorraine, I'm sure you're on it. Thank you. Um, uh, really needs to be linked and, and done regularly for you to really um, fine tune yourself to be getting these goals and getting things that you wanted to. So it's completely OK to have gratitude in one hand and desire in the other. All right. So it doesn't mean if you're feeling grateful that that doesn't then block you from wanting more because that can be a bit confusing can't it sometimes when you're thinking I, oh, I'm really really grateful for everything I've got now and then in the next breath you're saying but can I have this this and this please and it is okay to do that as long as you you're sort of almost linking the two so yes I'm really super grateful for everything that I've got however I do still believe that I'm worth more and I do still believe that if I stay on the right tracks and I keep pushing myself forward I can have whatever I want all right. And I truly, truly believe we all can and you all can as well. So keep going with those daily affirmations. Do you remember I said on week one that we used to talk about it taking 21 days to form a habit? But actually now the most recent research says it's actually 66 days to form a habit. Now we're only on day. Are we on day 21? My maths is rubbish. <laughs> it's the third week. So that must be about right. So you are only just into the very first cycle, day 14 to 21 days of changing these habits. So if you did it for a week and you went, nah, that didn't really work. Don't feel any different. I'm not going to bother with that anymore. You are definitely missing a trick. So please go back again. Think about your goals. Think about what you what you want. Um, get some stuff written down every day. Make sure you do it alongside your gratitude so that your mind is focused on, on you know, getting the right things into your life because it's really important. And then obviously um, last week we talked about the money mindset and the money aspect of that as well. And it is OK to want money. <laughs> it is OK to earn money. It is OK to have money coming into your life because you're all good people. And I know uh, that good people are just going to do more good things uh, by having money. And you know, the, the ripple effect that we can all have by being positive, by giving gratitude, by um, celebrating our successes and just by being nice people, that ripple effect can have a massive impact on loads and loads of people. So I wonder if you know how many people you've spoken to in the last 14 days or how many people you've touched with a message or how many people you've been in contact with, because every single time we are in contact with anybody we have an impact on that person. I and mean, that's that's mad if you think about it, isn't it? So the, the responsibility that we have when we are in conversations, communications, or particularly in the actual space of other human beings, we have a massive impact on them. Um, today, actually, I had quite a, a sobering, I, I went to do a face-to-face -face appointment today with Utility Warehouse. Um, second face-to-face -face since the beginning of lockdown. Oh my goodness, how bizarre is that? Um, I've done so much through Zoom and through camera, but this lady was a referral um, from somebody I knew through one of the school mums referred me to this lady. So I didn't know her. Um, 
But when I got there, um, she told me a, a sad story that her husband, who's only my age, has recently gone into a home with dementia, um, really poorly, doesn't know her anymore, can hardly speak. And um, I actually know him. So he was a jockey, he was a point to point jockey. And my ex partner actually rode at the same time as him. We did all the maths and everything. And I actually knew his name. Um, Karina's looking because she thinks I probably might know him as well. But anyway, it's a point to point jockey, um, you know, and it just really made me stop and think, you know, this is someone my age, fit and healthy. You know, she's been married to him for 27 years. And now he is in a home. She goes to visit him three days a week, but her daughter will no longer go because she finds it too upsetting. You know, she, her daughter's 17 and I don't want to bring the, the energy sadness down, but it just obviously makes you feel really, really grateful. But the other thing was I managed to have a really lovely hour with this lady. And I think I really helped her because we did reminisce and we talked and I, and, and she remembered the magazine, she remembered racing. And I said to her, please, when you see Andy tomorrow, will you say hi from Celia? I said, cause you know, they don't know, they don't know how much he knows or how much he takes in or, you know, whether he's really aware or not. It's really horrible disease. I know, um, Lorraine, I know you, you know quite a lot about that. And I'm sure some of you also have had, you know, it is horrible, it's very cruel very cruel for the people that are left and the people that are around um but anyway what I'm trying to say is I, I really felt I had a good impact on her today you know we had a really nice time it was really lovely for her to just offload it was lovely for her to find someone that sort of um knew him as well from the past you knew how he was Jackie's coming in now so just be mindful of the impact that you can have on everybody I know you all do because you're all lovely but sometimes you know you can just go that little step further and the ripple effect of that is so amazing so how's your energy this evening how are you feeling I know it's probably I know I can see Adam's tired <laughs> I know Adam's tired Adam, I've been watching your sleep journey posts I know you're, I know you're a bit tired but we'll, we'll try and keep you going and, and obviously we're not going to be here for hours and hours and hours so we are going to be talking a little bit this evening to start with about what's your mission and um, what's your mission in life what's your mission for work this is a bit deep and many of you you know you just think well I just do that I'm just going to save people some money do I need a mission and um, the thing is if you've got a mission and if you really do build and work out what your mission is you will and be more aligned with it you will naturally do more towards it without it feeling like a chore and it may be something on a slightly different kilt to anything you thought about before so I just wanted you to write down these seven things um, and you can put it in the workbook under what is your mission for your work if you haven't yet written your mission out you don't know what it is this might help so firstly money uh, secondly making a difference uh, third is recognition. Fourth is passion and joy. Fifth is time freedom. Sixth is growth and evolution. And seventh is leaving a legacy. So if you had to, well, I'm going to make you do this now, <laughs> in just within one minute, if you had to pick the top three things in order, one, two, three, out of those that are your priority now, we're going to do it super quick, and then I'm going to let you do this over the next week, all right? So this is super quick first, and then we're going to talk about whether that's actually true. <laughs> um, so just pick your number one, two, three, super quick out of those what you feel is your priority right now and what could then actually turn into your long-term mission um because obviously some of those are very different it will be completely different for everybody there is no wrong or right all of these things are important and they could well be your number one priority it doesn't matter which they are no one's going to judge you on what you chose um is, would anybody like to share what they chose their first three? Just because it would be quite easy for me then to sort of go, Sean and Adam, well done, well done. the two, the two chappies are straight in there. Go on, well, let's do, let's let you both then. But Sean, you go first. And Sue's got yeah. Amanda, everyone wants to share. That's good, that's brilliant. Sean, you go for it. Yeah, so I've got money, time freedom and make a difference. Okay, 
Okay, that that's really good. So you're you're picking money as number one. I would assume that's because you feel at the moment you need that to do the other two. Is that correct? Yeah. Is that why money is yeah. number one? Well, well done. But, but that's really brilliant to put money first because a lot of people, well done, Emma's put it in the chat and please feel free to. That's that's again. Oh, it's interesting. Okay, so so you guys, I obviously did a good thing on the money mindset last week because quite a few of you are putting money first, and that's quite rare when you do this exercise because normally people are almost scared to say that money is is a priority. But that's that's good to see that. Adam, what did you put? Um, can you hear me all right? Because yeah. in your earphones, um, yeah, yeah. I put uh, passion and joy, growth, and then money because I believe the first two promote the third. Yeah. Yeah, no. absolutely. And, you know, I said there is there is absolutely no wrong or right. And if if no. you feeling passion and joy and being in alignment with what you're doing is your is your absolute priority. As we said last week, the money's probably going to flow to you. Anyway. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Because so, I've done I've done it where I've had the money as the priority and um, it didn't work. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair enough. That's, that's absolutely fair enough. Sue, do you want to share? Because you've popped up, you put your camera back on. So I feel yeah. Like, yeah, you want to share. Go for it. He's still cooking my tea, you know, he just can't get the stuff. That's all right. Um, he, he has brought me a vodka and coke. Oh, so brilliant. Well, that's mine. That's mine. No. <laughs> I'll, I'll send him down. Don't yeah, you? send him down. Um, I put uh, number one money. Number two, time freedom. My business has already bought me one day off a week and I'd like another one. Yeah. Um, and then three, I put recognition, which if you'd asked me about that six, seven years ago, I would never, ever have picked recognition. But actually, I, I've realized that I kind of, I feed off that. I love going to our business conferences and listing the, you know, when, you know, when anyone goes on stage, all their achievements are listed. I love that. I don't like going on stage. I don't like the walk across it. Um, and I know people on this call that uh, work with me don't like it either. But Actually, it's in um, my upline always said, you do it, you're up there for me because I want to see that you've succeeded and I love it. And so, you know, to list the achievements that you have, it shows you, I think, how far you've come. So when I say recognition, it's not that I want everyone to clap and go, oh, look how great she is. It's for me to realize that actually I came from zero and this is what I've achieved over the years that I've been doing. Yeah, that's, that's why I put that. Is that Sean's funny feedback? I'm not sure. No. I'm muting myself now in case it's my mic. I don't know. Someone, I think it might have been Sean, but anyway, that's fine. No, Sue, so that is so true. And actually, um, you know, they say men die for it, babies cry for it. You know, recognition is a very basic human need as well, and um, to be recognised and to be thanked and for people to be grateful as well. You know, that comes back to gratitude in a way. But no, I absolutely believe, and um, that's so good. And actually, when you do goal setting, if you're doing a proper whole goal setting session, one of the first things it's really good to do is to write down all your achievements to date and write down the things that you're most proud of, because it really does reset your mind that you actually can achieve more than you think. And absolutely, um, you know, look at where you started, where you are today <clears throat> and where you can continue to go in the future. So that's absolutely amazing. That was amazing. You lot are awesome. You, you really got that, you know, really super quick. But what I would say is now take that away and really think about it. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely do a deep dive on those things and ask yourself a few questions about is that really my number one priority mm -hmm. and why? And you can keep you know, almost put, put each one on like a post-it or something, keep putting it at the top and keep asking yourself, what do I really, really want to achieve? What do I really want my mission to be? Um, because that will definitely um, help you sort of steer out those longer term goals, you know, that longer term vision, that longer term, what do I want? If you really understand what your mission is and what drives you, you are going to be much more likely to achieve your goals. And maybe also when we're talking about other things, other ways you can earn money, other things you can do, that might also open up some, some ideas to you as well about what really, really do, does drive you and what you can do. Okay, so I'm going to jump into the slides now. We've got a few slides um, and I've got a few notes here, which I must remember to talk about. I think that was all for that, but yes. Okay, so bear with me while I get this up. Hopefully it will play ball tonight. I've got to move everybody. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, can you all see that? Okay, got that annoying thing on the screen. So I can see Adam, Sean, and Anne. So you two, you're my you're my three. You're my three. I can see. So stay awake, guys. <laughs> stay awake. Keep, keep talking to me. Keep waving at me. Uh, right. So. So uh, what do mission, what would you like to achieve? So I want to help people lead an extraordinary life and realize their full potential through creating a flexible income that gives them choices, freedom and happiness. That's just sort of when I come on to Passion to Pocket and I talk about my mission, it's pretty much that. So personally, if I could help more people um, live a life that they really enjoy, you know, again, and we talk about it through an income, through a flexible income. That, and also, you know, really with me as well, it's about helping people have passive income. Because passive income obviously does give some of the things like Sean said about time freedom, you know, money now and all those things that is really, really important to me. And that absolutely does drive me. And I love helping people do a little bit more than they thought they might be able to in whatever that is in, in business and in life and on the back of horses. <laughs> I did that for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. Right. Now we're going to get onto this bit about ideal client, ideal partner, ideal customer, because I know that for those of you in UW, I know that this can be difficult. We can struggle a bit with this because we always say, I know you're not all in UW, I'm sorry to keep coming back to that, but I know lots of you are. And when you have a product or service that I that could serve anybody, it's so easy to just say, well, anybody, you know, everybody can be a customer. Anyone can, can work with us. Um, and what that means is that you're not necessarily, when we get onto social media, when we get onto maybe marketing communications and things like that, you're, you're too general, you're missing people. And if you can really, really niche it down to who you're absolutely would love to work with and direct all your messaging at them, you will still get people around them. It's not like saying, you know, I want my ideal person's 45 years old, so I'm not going to recruit anybody into my team or, or I'm not going to help anyone who's 25. That's that's rubbish. That's not how this works. How this works is you absolutely honing in and focusing on the people you would most like to help and work with. Now, with um, UW, let's just use that as, as an example. The ideal prospect, I suppose, the outcome of the ideal prospect would be someone that owns their own home, signs up for all the services and also joins the business. Would that be fair to say? You know, that's the ideal sort of outcome in that one session that you're with the person. So maybe as a bit of a clue, think of people that are going to fit that bill straight away. And so think of people that are going to be more likely to be homeowners, but more likely to have a need to also join the business. So that's going to just narrow things down for you a little bit. I'm not going to give you too many hints and tips with this because I want you to do the stretching and the thinking. And also because I don't want you all to come up with the same ideal person because <laughs> that slightly dilutes the whole point of this, because, you know, you might prefer to work with professional people. You might prefer to work with younger people. You might prefer to work with females. You might prefer to work with males. It, it doesn't matter. There is no right or wrong with that. Obviously, if, you, if you're outside of UW and you have a different, um, you know, any other business, still drill down. I know Ash is on here and Ash says, you know, she can help anybody because, of course, yes, she can. She's the entrepreneur's accountant. But then think, who are your favorite clients? Who are the ones you most like working with? Um, or even what part of the accountancy do you do you like doing the most? Um, you know, so that's really, really important. So um, obviously, people that are going to be ideal as partners are ideally people that have a large network. But do you know what? People with a large network are ideal for any of us in our businesses, whether I'm talking about passion to pocket, whether Adam's talking about his creative writing, whether we're talking about an accountancy business, people that know a lot of people. Mm -hmm are always really good to have, aren't they? Because they're great for referrals. You know, they're great for recommending us on. They're great for helping us spread the word. So I am going to read out what my what I have written about my ideal client, all right? So I'm gonna read this out and hopefully this will give you some ideas about what you could be writing down. So my ideal person i've put 45 to 55 she's actually 49 she's called rachel with an e <laughs> she's got three children the youngest is 13 the middle one's 16 the oldest is 19 she's worked in various roles through her life always juggling around the children she originally trained as a teacher did some childminding nannying she loves animals and also has done some dog walking and pet sitting she also volunteers at local animal charities 
Her children are all sporty. Her middle daughter rides <laughs> and she has been an active mum in the pony club and also is very encouraging and supportive with her son's football teams. She has devoted the last 20 years to bringing up her kids, but now feels a bit stuck, frustrated and feels she is worth much more. She's got a really good network of friends. She's the life and soul of the party when she goes out. She likes her wine a bit too much and she's a fantastic cook. So her friends love a good dinner party at her house. She struggles a bit to keep as fit as she would like and knows that she could eat better. <laughs> she's always worked hard, but doesn't really have any savings pension or anything like that. Her husband is a builder. He works in domestic properties and they own their own house, although it's never quite been finished how she would like it. Mm. She is very supportive. He is very supportive, sorry, of whatever she does and is great with the kids, but not terribly ambitious. They both love holidays, but finances have prevented them from going away as often as they would like to. She would love to build her own community of women and help them do more and be more. She loves networking, but has never really done it for business. And she loves to paint. She's very creative, but never had the time to pursue that as a business and doesn't really know where to start. Julie Barry's just popped in. Sorry, not Julie, Lorraine's Barry's just popped into the waiting room. I'm sure you've seen that. Mm -hmm. So there we are. Was that quite detailed about somebody that I would like to work with? Now, those of you that know me, was there some elements in there that are like me? Do you, would you say there's some bits yeah. in there, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um, so quite often they say with this that your ideal person you want to work with could be a version of yourself. It could be a past version of yourself. It could be a future version of yourself. There's, there's all sorts of stuff tied in there. A lot of that was, was definitely me. Some of it was me when I started the business. The art thing is not me at all. Um, but the reason I brought that in there, because how much value do you think I could give to that person with everything that I currently do right now. Mm -hmm. um, so I have put, I could help her with UW and she's got a great network of people who know, like, and trust her. So she would find it relatively easy to get going in that business and make some money pretty quickly. But I could also help her start to think about the possibilities of growing her art business alongside. She could start a Facebook community of other people who love to paint for fun and enjoy crafts. She could then find people who could offer support and training to that group alongside her starting her own Facebook group where she could promote her own art within the group. Encouraging people in that community to start sharing and buying and selling off each other and then all, always go on to organize some online or offline local art and craft fairs. Okay, so I've found the person <laughs> that I wanna work with and I've already thought about how I can help her. So do you think my current network could help her with her passion? And could I help her make enough money fairly quickly to start feeling independent again? Would she be grateful? <laughs> I think the answer to all of that is yes. Um, I know the answer to all of that is yes, because I know that I could do all of those things for her. So if I am gonna be communicating through my messaging in my networking um, that I'm doing and my breadcrumbing, which I'll talk about later mm -hmm. through the Facebook groups I'm in, that is who I'm talking to right now when I'm on my social media. I am talking to that person and I am wanting to get into her world <laughs> and wanting to, to make friends with her <laughs> and wanting to um, be able to have a conversation with her through networking. So we are going to talk about networking and how we do that properly a bit more next week. All right, because there's a few things I want to, to sort of tick off, if you like, this week before we get into the, the nitty gritty of networking. Um, OK, so on here, then, I know that you've been scribbling stuff down. You've been thinking about it. So how old are they? What gender are they? What do they do? Have they got a family? What are their hobbies? What do they do to relax? So I want you to really nail this now. We talked about it in the challenge. So some of you had a bit of a go at it there. Um, really nail this. Really, really think about this. It is worth it. It will change your communication. It will change who you attract as well. Yours will not be anything like mine. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you said it was a middle-aged man who's always been self-employed all his life. Um, 
and he's now finding that it's a little bit difficult you know on the tools or it could be that you want to go down i want to work with professional accountants it doesn't matter because as we know there's a broad scope of people that are good but bear in mind the good network bear in mind the needs that they might might want and the things that you might be able to help them with all right so that again is an ongoing work we're going to bring all this back together at the end of this course but this is stuff to be drip feeding through um, what you're doing and trying to help you feel um, that you have an idea what you're doing. Uh, right, just a little word about selling again um, and how you feel about selling. So that was in the workbook as well, wasn't it? So we've got after the, um, the bit about your ideal client, then we've got in there, what are the first thoughts that come into your head when you hear the word sell? So use the chat, everyone. Um, I know, we, again, we had this in the challenge. Some of you put it in there. It's the same as when I said, ask, you know, what do you think about the word rich? Um, let me just open up the chat. Well done, sorry. I'm just gonna scroll up and see what everyone's been putting in there. Yeah, so we've put annoying, pushy, I can see that. Brilliant, Julie's put your eyes up clan in there. Sorry, Julie, I didn't see that when I was talking, but that looks amazing. <laughs> I love, it's just, I just love that. I, I've got to talk to you more about that. My ideal client's Dan and he's 24 and he's a milkman. That's amazing. He loves music and theater. Love it. Absolutely love it. Please do put these in the, um, you know, in the Facebook group as well. So we've got more time to study them after this evening. So that's really good. Mm -hmm. And ambitious mm -hmm. to a bit fed up. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Hey, Mona. Brilliant. I know some of you did that before. That's great. Right. Okay. So on to the sales bit. Sorry. So annoying, pushy, commission based. Um, okay. Well done. So Ash is saying she she used that. What does rich mean to you? The few clients, very interesting results. That's that's really cool. That's really cool using it with what you do, isn't it? Um, yeah. Okay. So sales, pushy. Blah. Uh, some of you have said commission, pushy, commission based, etc. All right. Now that's absolutely fine. We talked about it that the word to sell actually means to give. Interestingly enough. So is, we've really got to get your head around this because what we do, all of us, in whatever you do, we are just providing value to people. We are simply, or they are, exchanging money for something you or they want or need. That's what buying is, isn't it? Buying and selling is just making an exchange. You're exchanging money for something that you want or you need. Now, I want you to think about the second thing again, because this is when we get on to messaging, when we get on to marketing, when we get on to attracting people to us. You sell them what you want, but you give them what they need. Now, that doesn't mean you're being dishonest. What they want is the transformation or the end result or the, you know, the, the feeling of having that product, the service, whatever it is. That's what they want. To get there, they may have to go through a process. So, for example, um, I do, where did I just write this? Okay, so this is sort of two, two options for that, if you like. So I could say to someone, if I was talking to them about becoming a partner of Utility Warehouse, I could say, right, come and join my team. You've got to work really hard every day. You've got to contact a load of people, write a list of everybody you know. You've got to set some goals. Um, we're going to then get on the phone. We're going to make some calls. We're going to make a load of appointments. You're going to show them a presentation. You've got to do some training and then you'll make some money. All right, so you could say that. Or you could say, uh, Sean, if I could show you a way to earn some really good money part time by growing a, a fun community of like minded people, as well as be able to pursue your passion at the moment for salsa and golf, would you want to give it a go? Definitely. <laughs> so that's slightly different, isn't it, than me selling you what actually is going to happen <laughs> if you, become, you know, to get to the end result, you've got to do da 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 da. -da. I'm going to just give you the end result in a way and i'm going to help you achieve that all right you've got to get them hooked on the, the transformation what happens what they need you know what they want and then you've got to give them what they need all right and that, so i just want you to think about that as well and absolutely a hundred percent we're going to talk about creating raving fans and referrals and stuff in another module but always do what is right for them if you make that your absolute mantra when it comes to selling, providing a service, whatever it is you do, you won't ever go far wrong. Because if you're always thinking what's in it for them and not what's in it for me, you'll be in the right place. You'll be, you'll be working with integrity. You'll get your referrals. You'll, you know, you'll, you'll always make sure that people are happy. So we know that, you know, we're not going to 
We're not going to introduce anybody as a customer if it doesn't work for them. We're not going to introduce anyone as a partner if it's clearly not going to work for them. That's a hard one sometimes because I think sometimes we want it more for the person than they want it for themselves. And we can see opportunity where they can't. So if you bring somebody in like that, you have to be prepared to really work alongside them, stay with them and, you know, and, and help them. Um, so that that is really interesting. Um, selling again, you know, when you go to Asda, there's a certain expectation that you're going to go in there, you're going to check some stuff in your trolley, you're going to get to the checkout and you're going to buy it. <laughs> and there is a certain expectation in certain circles that there is going to be an exchange, there is going to be money changing hands, there is going to be a product or service. And that's actually where business networking is very good. Um, and that's why I'm going to talk to, to you more about that. But also what you have to remember in Asda is there is a whole aisle of bread. <laughs> there is every single type of bread you can possibly imagine. And I would like to bet my bottom dollar when you go in there, you do not buy a loaf of each. <laughs> you go in there and you pick what bread you want. And the manager of Asda does not cry when you leave without buying all of it. So the reason I'm saying that is we have to understand that not everybody's going to want what we have, whatever it is. But that is completely fine, because if you start talking in the right way to the right people, you will find enough people that really do want what you have. Does that make sense? So this is where this whole thing comes in about tr trying to be a little bit more focused. Um, now, I am not a trained copywriter or marketeer. I have written a magazine and I have done an awful lot of writing and an awful lot of advertising, an awful lot of PR. But we are going to have in the group this week, like we did the great interview with Ash last week, we've got um, Gillian coming in uh, next Tuesday, I believe it is. No, it might be Wednesday. I'm meeting her tomorrow, so I'll confirm that with you. And she's going to talk more about how to really speak to that ideal person, all right? How to use your messaging correctly and how to also explain the transformation so i'm really looking forward to that i've got a meeting with her tomorrow morning so um let's just move on to the next bit so this is this is sort of the, the marketing message this is the the process this is uh, for how to attract the right people to you how to help people more how to um, encourage people to sign up or for whatever it is that you are wanting them to so first of all find the right people you know if you've got the right people you're going to have a lot less no's. You're going to have a lot more yeses. You're going to have a lot more positive experiences when you're talking to the right people. Secondly, you have to understand what you can do for them and what their pain points are. What is it they need? You know, from a customer point of view, we, we would love to be able to help them if we're with UW. We want to help them pay less. We want to make it simple for them. We don't want them to have any hassle. We want that one bill. We want them to, to have money. You know, so, so what is their pain? Their pain would be, oh, God, th this is really stressing me out, these bills. That lady today was so stressed out about her utilities because her husband has gone into, obviously, the home. You know, he used to do it. She's now doing it. And by the way, I saved her £80 a month today. £80 a month, which was absolutely lovely to do. And most of that was actually on BT, BT sport package that she's not watching anymore, you know, all this stuff. So it was really nice. She was in a right muddle. So she was typical of absolutely the perfect person for me to go and see. Her friend had referred her to me because she had said to her friend, I'm in a right mess with my utilities. I really don't know. And now I've had this um, increase in energy prices. I don't know what to do. So Karen immediately said, oh, you need to speak to Celia. Celia will come and sort it out. She's been a customer of mine for five years, the lady that recommended her. So that was awesome. So she had the pain. She knew that our, the promise of what I could deliver was to go in there in a really simple process, take all that headache away from her and have a really nice time and a nice cup of tea at the same time. <laughs> so, you know, what's, who's your people? What are you, how are you going to help them? What can you deliver? What is the transformation or the promise that you're going to give them? These are all key things to think about when you are doing your messaging. Um, right, I'm just checking my notes. Yeah, that's all good. Okay, so we're just going to talk a little bit about social media um, for the rest of this evening. And we are particularly this evening going to talk about Facebook. All right, um, that's where I am most comfortable and where I've, I've built most of my business, where I've built my networking, where I've networked with people, where I've met people. Um, I am getting better on Instagram and better on LinkedIn. Um, but this will be very much again. I want you to think about your ideal person again. Uh, now, this is changes all the time. But at the moment, 24 percent of Facebook total users 
of females between 18 and 34 years old. 35% of the total users are actually male between the age of 25 and 34. That surprised me. Obviously, there are all different ages on there. Um, that was just one statistic, which I thought was quite interesting. LinkedIn at the moment is the fastest growing of the social media platforms, which again, I find that interesting. And 61% um, on there are between the ages of 30 and 64. So we tend to think, or I think, of Facebook as being the, the sort of slightly older, I thought predominantly female, which there we are, that just shows that I'm in a lot of ladies networking groups on Facebook, that's why I thought that. Um, and yes, yeah, sort of ages, sort of um, yeah, 18 to sort of 35, 40, I suppose. Older, the older generation tend to be on Facebook now, but not quite as active, maybe, as the ones in those groups. LinkedIn tends to be the more professional. So, for example, there's um, Heather will probably be watching this on Catch Up. So, Heather, I hope you don't mind me sharing this. Um, Heather Cox is absolutely smashing Utility Warehouse at the moment, like completely. She's on the leaderboards all the time on everything. And she has spent 18 months on LinkedIn building and nurturing an audience of mortgage advisors. Um, so she literally speaks to them in all her messaging on LinkedIn. It's about critical illness plans. It's about um, mortgages. It's about homeowners, et cetera, et cetera. She's done a fantastic job. And now she is starting to recruit lots of mortgage advisors who obviously are great because they've got a great client base of home owner, you know, blah, blah, blah. So please don't go and steal all Heather's clients after I've told you this. But um, think of who might be on a platform like that, who is the people that you do want to attract when you've done your ideal client bit. And then Instagram is growing super fast as well. 68% on Instagram are female and 90% on there are under 35. So that is definitely sort of a younger platform. And I was going to go all the way down the TikTok, Snapchat line. And I thought, you know what, that'll just blow my brain. So for tonight, we're just going to talk and look about Facebook. Now, the thing is, these days, um, if you met somebody at a, a networking event, at a craft fair, at, at a 20K giveaway stand, you met somebody... You might not do this, but what most people will do now is go and stalk that person on social media. They will go and find you. They'll look you up and they will check out what you're all about. So this is why what I'm going to talk about tonight is important. If you're going to go down the networking route, if you're going to go down the ideal client route, it's not only important for you to think about who is your ideal client. It's also important that when that ideal client stalks you, <laughs> that they're going to think, oh, yeah, that's somebody I'd want to I want to be in their world. I want to work with them. Um, and I suppose that's why the similarities in, in the person that I've said is my ideal client, the reason I have built her to be quite similar to me is the chances are she'll stumble across my Facebook and actually think, do you know what? She's all right. She drinks wine. She has the odd party. And, and um, you know, she's a mum. And, you know, there's, there's like loads of things in common. So this might make you rethink that person you just wrote about. It doesn't matter. This is what it's all good food for thought. It might. So. Your other task for this week um, is going to be to sort out your, your basic profile on Facebook. So we're not talking groups or pages or anything like that this week. We're going to go into that a bit more next week. For this week, I want you to think about these things. So firstly, is your profile picture you? <laughs> Would somebody recognize you? If they uh, saw your picture and then saw you, is it real? Is it 20 years old? <laughs> are, you trying to, are you trying to look like something you're not anymore? <laughs> so your profile picture is really important, really important if you're going to be doing networking. And, and it's important anyway, because again, if someone stalks you, they want to be able to look into your eyes. They want to see who you are. They want to know whether you are, you know, the person that they thought you were. And then your cover picture um, again, your cover picture should reflect something out of the next three things that we're going to talk about in a minute. So your, your cover picture should reflect either you as a person, something you believe in, one of your um, one of your three things that you would like people to know about you. So it could be family, it could be a hobby, it could be business, it could be, um, you know, something motivational. It's, it's entirely up to you, but just have a little think about, does your cover picture reflect what you would like somebody to know about you? All right. The other thing is your bio. So check out your bio. What does your bio say? Do you have your business in there? Now, I personally think you should. 
Some people say not. I think you should have what you do in your bio. Because again, if people are looking for you and you have approached them for, let's say, utility warehouse, and then they go on your Facebook and your bio doesn't even mention it, they will think that's odd. So think about what it says in your actual bio in the about you bit on your Facebook profile and tweak it. Obviously, I know sometimes if you've got a job and this is your side hustle, you know, you, I, I understand some in some cases it can be difficult to do that. You might not feel comfortable to do that. Do what you're comfortable with. But for most people, I think it's pretty cool. And now just for, go through, have a little scroll through your last month, two months, when's how active you are on there and write down the three things that people would know about you if they were to go through your Facebook. Um, so what three things would they, I mean, it might be more than three, but just pick three things that they would know about you. So, so for example, I think if you look through mine, I haven't looked through the last month, but I think people would very much know that I am with Utility Warehouse because I've been banging on a bit about energy prices recently, which is not normal for me on there, but I have. They would definitely know that I'm a mum because I, I very often post stuff with the kids um, they would also know that I am doing something else, um, a course or passion to pocket crops up in there. Uh, they also would know probably that I like drinking wine too much occasionally, um, you know, so that sort of that, that would be the sort of feel. And of course, that does fit in really well with who I've just said my ideal client is. But if it's not what you would like people to know, think about what you can tweak and what three things would you like them to know? So if they're not the same, write down the three things you would like them to know. Because at some point, we, what we think on our social media is we think that everybody that we're connected with knows everything that we do. We think everybody sees everything. In reality, Facebook is really bad with the algorithms and things at the moment, and hardly anybody sees what you post. You know, it's really tricky to get your post noticed on there, which is why you've actually got to work quite hard on there to engage people. The, the way to push your posts up through the algorithms is to have lots of comments on your post. So if you put something a bit funny up that creates a reaction, those people are then more likely to see what you post then over the next few days and weeks. I'm not going to get really technical with it because I don't want to bog you down. But if you want your Facebook to be used and you utilize it in the right way, you need to be posting at least once a day, preferably twice a day. You need to be using your stories as well as your posts because stories get seen by more people. And you need to actually have a little think about what do you want to post? So what is your content going to be? Now, I'm a, on my on my personal one. I, I'm I, I'm very random, which you will see if you follow me. I'm very random. I don't really think it through. I don't do a massive content plan. I, I am going to start doing that more in the new year because I know how powerful it is. And, you know, the other thing is engaging more with other people's posts. So before you post anything, spend 15 minutes scrolling through, liking stuff that other people have done, commenting on their posts, um, chatting to people, liking, commenting, all that stuff. Because then when you post, you're already you've shown Facebook that you are an active person and you're on there and you are you are, you know, you're making stuff happen. I'm just going to finish the slides and then I'll shut the slides down so that we can carry on chatting about this because I think I'm nearly there with the slides let me just um go to the next one there we are so actually this is this is your homework actually now so you can uh, take a picture of this or write it down if you want to so this was um I will just talk on this slide so that I don't forget all these things so obviously uh we talked about working out your mission it's quite heavy this week I'm, I'm being a bit you know I'm grabbing your time a bit here because I want this is important when I put this six weeks together I've realized that I probably needed a year <laughs> to get through all this stuff but we've only got the six modules so I am cramming it in a little bit and please at the end I am going to ask you for some serious feedback and I really want you to help me out with this about the things you found most useful the things that you would like more of the things that you found overwhelming and all that stuff but anyway firstly work out your mission have a real think about that go back to those seven things what is it that really works for you work out who you want to serve who is that ideal person you want to help or that you really feel you could have a, a great affinity with if they were going to come and join your team or become a client or a customer of yours. Tidy up your Facebook. We've just been talking about that. Check out your bio, check out your pictures and think about your content for a week. Think about, you know, can I tweak this now? Can I get these three things that I want people to know? Can I start to drip feed that in? You have to remember social media is supposed to be social and Facebook particularly is a social platform. So you don't want to be ramming your business down people's throats every post. You want to really mix and match it up. 
but I bet you that most of the people on your feed don't really know what you do. And maybe now's the time to write a story post in there explaining what you do and why you do it and even perhaps chucking your mission in there and even starting to talk about your ideal person because if you start saying to people this is who I'm looking for that person will start to appear in your life all right so do think about that um think about what you're going to write don't don't share too much of other people's Facebook doesn't really like that it likes you to be unique so to really try and do your own post obviously tagging people and all that helps and we're going to talk a lot more about Facebook groups next week, um, but and also building your audience, we're going to talk about next week. But thinking about who you want to serve, start to think where they might be on Facebook. So think about what groups you could be in and show up more in, in order to start having conversations with the right people. So if you're not in many Facebook groups yet, I would pick five that you are going to become part of and that you are going to start to engage more in and you're going to start to, to meet people in. And those of you that are in Passion to Pocket at the moment, I well, no, actually, there's 300 people in there and they're not there's, there's probably 30 or 40 UW people in there. But, you know, that's one group that we can start to nurture and we can start to talk and you can start to, to build relationships in for sure. <coughs> Um, obviously, the, the ones of you that are in Mums in Business, you're not utilising that like you could. You know, Mums in Business is a is a huge network and a very supportive community. And um, I think I said the other day, if you're in the local group, fine, but go in the main group as well. Get into the Mums in Business, the, the main international group, because it's huge and there's lots of very supportive people in there. Um, if you've got a hobby, so if you like golf and you think your ideal person might be someone that likes playing golf, go and check out some golf groups on Facebook. Um, Adam, I know, obviously, with the creative writing, you've started your own group, which is fantastic. We're going to talk about that more next week. Um, so it says there, think about what Facebook group you could start to attract your ideal client. You know, so where would or what interest is, does that person have? Because your group doesn't have to be what you sell. So your group doesn't have to be, I want to sell you utilities or I want to recruit you. <laughs> you know, Sean's recruitment for UW Facebook group would probably not go down very well and you probably wouldn't get many people in there. But if you thought more about what your ideal customer is or client or potential partner, what do they like doing? Then you start to build a community for them. And because you are the leader of the group, you have massive uh, trust from people. You have the authority. You have, you know, it's, it's an awesome place to be. I can tell you that for nothing. Right. I'm going to come out of this so we can just chat. Um, yeah. So, OK, next week we're going to talk more about networking and a bit more about groups and all that sort of stuff. Right. Oh, gosh, 20 past eight. Doesn't time fly when you're having fun and talking a load of rubbish? No. Anyway. <laughs> OK. So um, that was quite a lot, I think. Was that a lot? Was that too much? No, no it, was it was good. Brilliant. So, OK, so it's giving you like lots and lots and lots of things to think about. And again, you know, I don't expect that that is not going to be a a job done in a week's time it really isn't this is just for you to start having a you know my future business book with these ideas and things in there that you can start to draw out you can start to use you can start to 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 be consistent in you know your social media and things like that because this isn't a quick fix it never is is it you know life is never a quick fix this is about you learning patterns of behavior mindsets that will help and serve you building an audience and a community of people that want your help and then delivering the message. You know, then we talk about form, don't we? I, I don't know if you're familiar with form. I think, Sean, you asked that question, actually, because you saw it somewhere. So form is about conversations when you talk about family, occupation, recreation, and then you deliver the message. Now, that is basically what you're doing when you're starting to build a community and you're bringing people together and you're delivering them what they want. You're building the relationship with them until the time is right to deliver the message, which is also to sell the thing, <laughs> the thing, whatever it is you want to sell or, 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 or to serve them or to give them value. That's what that is all about. OK, has anybody literally anything, questions, comments, anything about this evening that you just want to throw out there that sprung to mind or that you're not sure of or anything? Feel free. Use the chat or um, I know your brains are going. I can see you all in this. I would like to ask. Yes, yeah, so if, please do. If you have the, the time and the capacity, could you look at our bios and just kind of give some feedback? You Absolutely. Know, 
we might think everything looks okay in our posts and everything like that but yeah. to have it from an independent perspective would be really useful I think absolutely so I was going to mention that tonight actually some of you and I need to check the date some of you signed up in time to not only get a one-to-one -one with me but also a Facebook audit I need to check back on the dates it was like some offers that I had on you know when, when you first joined the course um, so if you if you have for that, then that's a pretty full on session. Sue, I know we've definitely got one to one, haven't we? And I think yeah. you've got the Facebook audit as well. So me, I can just say me and Julie Plummer were drunk when we signed up for this. So we have <laughs> no idea what we signed up for. <laughs> oh that's brilliant i'm glad you're enjoying it anyway nothing wrong with we that we loved it we want to drink more wine with you it's really cool <laughs> yeah absolutely no that's good okay so if you got one to one or a facebook order obviously we can go through it in detail but however yes i will what i'd like you to do is um so i'm going to put the responsibility back to you all a little bit because this will work better for me is i'd like you to message me when you want me to have a look at it so if you want to tweak it a little bit, just even just your bio, your photos, whatever, then message me and say, would you? And yes, I absolutely will. All right. So I will just have a, have a look. I'll give you some hints and tips about what you're doing. When we get next week and we're talking about the groups and pages and things, that comes into play even more. But yes, I absolutely will do that. Um, See, I Leah, can to, I add yeah. something? Yeah. I just um, So I've been, I've sort of gone back to scratch, uh, back to the beginning and I'm developing this uh, Better Sleep Products website, and I've put the um, creative writing thing on hold. Even the the book is kind of on hold because I'm learning from. The, I've gone back to the very beginning. And the one thing I'll say very important about ideal customers is that your ideal client is looking for you. Yeah. They're they're trying to find you, and at the moment they're having to rub shoulders and buy products and things from people who aren't their ideal um, service yeah. in a way. So you have to you have to wave a flag very high in the air and it's got to be finely tuned to what you want it to be. But that, as you said before, but that doesn't mean that you won't attract other people. Yeah. That, they'll, that extras, of course, will come. It won't be like, oh, like they're not going to bother. But getting that ideal, ideal client in your mind and pushing that work out there. So mine for better sleep products is parents who are knackered. <laughs> very loads. simple. Yeah. Very simple niche to be yeah. building a website around that is through affiliate marketing and products and things like that. But I'm also offering a lot of advice and help and support. And that's what the group is. And that's why that ties in the group and the website and the products. They all work together. And that's because I was and still am that tired parent <laughs> Adam, i love you so much. I, love what, I love everything you do and i honestly think that is absolutely so brilliant um that's such a good example of actually finding your niche through yourself isn't it through what you believe in through you want you want to help people because you really understand it and that's what i'm trying to get to really with the whole your mission and everything else because if you really find the people you want to serve and you find what you want to serve them with the rest of it, the rest of it happen, you know, happens. Yeah, it's hard work. I'm not going to say it's not hard work still, but it will happen. And that is absolutely awesome. And they will find you and you will create a certain energy around you that's attractive as well. And that, that can even come through your social media. You know, you can have energy even through posts and, and things, but do, we're going to talk about lives as well, because hands up who's scared of doing a live on their main Facebook feed. <laughs> Everybody, um, nearly Very everybody, scary. nearly like, we've got cameras on and hands up that yeah okay okay so that might have to be another mini course we do after this course because I think that would be really cool uh, do you remember I don't know if you were following me then but um I did that 14 day challenge with Ray Higdon do you remember that Lorraine um two years ago wasn't it because I posted one of the videos last night because I watched it and I thought actually that's quite cool I'm gonna post that again and um it just came up in my I believe mind. that was two years ago Ah, uh, thank you. Thank you, Sean, for your very kind comment. Yeah, so two years ago, it came up in my memories, that's what it was, and I thought, oh my god, I bet this is awful, because it was like, so I just played it, and I actually thought, no, that's quite a good message, I'm going to I'm gonna share it again. But that was a 14-day challenge of going live every day for 14 days, and it was absolutely brilliant. It was just mind-blowing. I think we should do it. I think we should, we might do that. I might do that in January or something, but, um, and it was, it was just really clever. Lots of hints and tips about what to talk about and, and just being comfortable with your audience. But that, that's so key because, um, 
if you are trying to attract that real person that wants to work with you, they need to know you, don't they? They need to get to know you if you don't know them. And social media is great, but there's nothing like a live as they're actually feeling like you've communicated with someone or you've heard them or you, you understand their style, their energy and everything else. Um, so there we are. I've gone off on another tangent now. So that's Facebook Lives, but I was going to mention that tonight anyway. <laughs> brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you, Adam, for your great contribution, as always. Adam is also going to be interviewed and we're going to be chatting to him properly in a live uh, probably the week after next. So it's Gillian this week. So get ready, Adam. Get ready for some funny questions from me on that. Um, OK, anybody else? Anything you'd like to add or say? We're bang on the hour. I can't believe how these sort of just fill an hour. I never have any idea when I start. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. <laughs> I'm not supposed to say that, am I? But it seems to be working out quite well. Good. All right. Well, you've got masses to do, haven't you, this week? Um, so let's we'll catch up on Monday with those that can, and we can see how you're getting on part way through the week. It'd be lovely to see you and hear from you and set those next seven day goals. Start thinking and stretching those goals a little bit because obviously that six week goal we had is is getting closer, isn't it? So how are you getting? How are you getting on? Are you? Are you making roads towards whatever it was you put there? <laughs> it was just as you were constipated. <laughs> ah, that's brilliant. Okay, well, we won't have any constipated lives when we when we do our, our lives. We're going to have, um, we'll, we'll drink plenty of water. Anyway, so see you Monday night. Come along, uh, bring your goals along, set your next seven days and um, anything. Yes, please do send me if you want me to have a look at your, your profiles. That's fantastic. And those that did sign up, I will work this out. I've just got to look back at the dates um, that have got a one-to-one -one and a Facebook audit. Um, we need to get those booked in before the end of the course, if possible, because I am going away on holiday and I'm going to have a couple of weeks off in December. Ooh, good for you. Yes, looking forward to it. Okay, brilliant. Well, thanks, guys. I really love these sessions. I've really enjoyed them. I hope you all have as well, because I'm getting um, you know a lot, a lot from it, a lot from all of you. So it's really brilliant. And I will see you, well, some of you I'll see you before, but I'll see you all hopefully on Monday night. All right. Take care, everyone. Have a good, good day. Thanks very Bye. much. Bye. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.